Finance Committee meeting to order. 
Um, we will start tonight with public comment. The Penridge School Board welcomes public comment. According to Policy 903, we remind everyone of the following, that public comment shall be limited to three minutes unless otherwise specified by the board. Participants must be recognized by the presiding officer and note their name and municipality. All statements shall direct, be directed to the presiding officer. Um, rather than to individual board employees, I'm sorry, individual board members, district employees, or members of the public, the speaker may speak once during each comment period. Please note that this, these sessions are designed for comments to protect the confidentiality and privacy rights of all members of our community. The board encourages members of the public to direct any comments regarding particular individuals such as students, district employees, privately to the superintendent or other appropriate administrators or board members, or to communicate with the board and superintendent privately by sending an email to PSD board, I'm sorry, PSD school board at penridge.org. Questions raised and not addressed may be followed up at a later time. Do we have public comment prior to tonight's presentations? No? Then we will move directly to the first item on our agenda that has to do with Percocet Borough and the presentation or a discussion about the LERTA tax program. Uh, hello and good evening. Um, on behalf of Percocet Borough, it is our great privilege to be able to come and uh, present something very exciting uh, to you this evening. Uh, just give me a second, I want to click on our slide here. Who are you? Oh, my name is Stephen Barth. I'm the Director of Economic Development for Percocet Borough. Um, and over the past um, five years, we've been working on uh, revitalizing the entire community, and that's included creating new housing, rebuilding our town center, which was destroyed by fire 30 years ago, and opening small retail businesses and manufacturing facilities. Um, throughout the community, and what I try to do is to work on high altitude, large scale initiatives that um, are supportive of all the organizations within the community and benefit the residents and um, it, the school district in particular and the, the borough itself and the county. Um, so what we're asking for this evening is a state-created uh, tax incentive program called LERTA, uh, which allows um, incentives to be created by the taxing bodies within, uh, within counties. So the taxing bodies would be the school district, the borough, and the county. And what we're asking, we have two properties. Uh, the definition of alert is to give um, incentives to take blighted properties or properties that are underutilized within a community um, to incentivize them uh, to create a higher tax base, more jobs, and more uh, development um, that creates revenue for the taxing bodies. Uh, so the two projects this evening, one is the Penridge Airport Business Park, uh, and we're asking uh, for the LERTA um, designation within what's called our Industrial 3 Zoning District, which includes just the airport. Uh, the reason um, a project like this, and just to clarify what a LERTA is, I mean, are, the board has already approved that in Sellersville for the former U.S. Gage site uh, that was through the Bucks County Industrial Development Authority and the county commissioners. So we're asking for a very similar thing that you've already approved. But the way the mechanism works is that each property, uh, we have the airport property and we have Del Bar, which has been this blighted uh, vacant factory building. Uh, between the two of them, uh, the airport property that we're asking for this evening the current total taxes are 25000 a year. And what this would do is the LERT is generally um, uh, improve the value 10 to 15 times what the original tax is. So Mr. Cassidy, who's working on the Del Bar property, I've worked with him on two other properties in Hatboro. Um, and in those communities, the one project called Hatboro Lofts, there's a picture in the little packet that I gave you. Uh, the original taxes on that property were $9,600. They are currently $360,000 a year. The second project I'm working with uh, Mr. Cassidy on in Hapro 
is a um, was an old motorcycle factory built in 1900, and those taxes are anticipated. They're currently 20,000 a year and will grow uh, over 200,000. Uh, so both of these projects here, the uh, the airport property is probably going to go from 25,000 to 350,000 a year, and the Del Bar property will go from 40,000 a year to about 400,000. So what I'm asking the school board and the school district for is the 10-year LERTA tax abatement, which stag keeps the taxes exactly as they are, and then incrementally increases them over a 10-year period. And what this does is allows us to court developers to remediate the properties and to create you know, more growth within the community that supports you. Um, similar to you and the borough, the only way you can create more revenue is either increase taxes or you create economic activity. So we've chosen to create economic activity that supports all of us and is a win-win for the entire community. Um, I'd like to introduce uh, Rob Brink is the uh, owner of the Penridge uh, Airport Business Park. Uh, each of us have five minutes, and then if you have questions for us, we can individually or collectively answer them. Good evening, everybody. Um, thank you for the opportunity to present. Uh, a little bit about me first. Uh, my, I, I uh, live in Coopersburg, Pennsylvania, and uh, have for about 25 years. Uh, my wife is a Penridge School District graduate, uh, grew up in Bedminster and um, graduated here probably a lot longer ago than she'd like to admit. But uh, we're local, we're local people. Um, her family has owned the airport and the property around it for since 1980, okay? And what's this proposal in front of you is to start to develop the industrial zone, the property that's already been industrially zoned around the airport, okay? It's not the airport itself, it's the industrial property around it. So if, it, uh, I'll just go ahead and click through this, there's more slides than we really have time for, but the structure is, as is shown here, Penridge Development Enterprises is the name of the company that owns all the land, and then Penridge Airport is the operator of the airport, just so you can see how they're connected. There actually is a typo there. <coughs> Penridge Development Enterprise was incorporated in 1965, and that's basically when Penridge Airport <coughs> opened. So it's two complementary projects, actually. The airport business park which is, and you'll see a, you'll see a picture in an upcoming slide of the big picture, but roughly 700,000 square feet of flex manufacturing space. Uh, a small hotel and a uh, brew pub, okay? And I'll show where those are. <clears throat> the other thing uh, which we're in the process of uh, trying to gain approval for is a couple of new hangars for the, for the airport. Uh, the airport is at full capacity and uh, we'd, like to, we'd like to put in two more hangars to add some more capacity to the airport and hopefully tie that together with the business park. So this is the big picture. Um, I, don't, I can't really point here. You see the runway and off to the bottom uh, center of the runway is the main uh, airport office and some hangars and then on the north side there are three existing buildings and two proposed buildings on the north side of the airport. <coughs> off to the left, uh, this is Ridge Road, um, you see the first two proposed buildings, one and two. They're both in Percocy Borough. Uh, the remainder of the buildings are in East Rock Hill Township. So the beginning of this project uh, is to build the first two buildings. And if you've driven down Ridge Road recently, you'll see that there's a, a driveway that's been created and you'll see some tree clearing that's already in progress. So the, uh, the project is moving forward. The development team, I have Langdon Engineering. Um, uh, Fox Rothschild is the legal representation, Colliers International is the broker, and Quandall Construction is a construction company from Harrisburg that's running the project. So the idea is it's a phase development, probably three phases. First phase is this, these first two buildings that I just mentioned, um, and then following on with the uh, hotel. Um, I leave the possibility that it might be a medical office building, depending on how the market behaves. Uh, and a brewery brew pub building near the um, airport entrance. Um, and along with this comes some PennDOT uh, road improvements in and around the area. Okay. Um, economic impact is probably the most important thing to this, to this uh, committee. 
Um, here are some estimates. Uh, the total for the first two buildings um, with full fit out, completely occupied, and of course this is a little bit subjective to the type of tenant, but roughly $40 million. There'll be about 150 construction jobs, and then depending on the user, different numbers of uh, permanent jobs. These again are estimates, but we're talking hundreds of jobs. I left this slide here basically as a reminder that I have a consultant working on the, the overall larger economic impact. Obviously the taxes is, is what this meeting is about, but there's a significant economic impact in the area to a project like this via the uh, employment and um, sort of secondary and tertiary effects that this development will have on the area through contractors and suppliers and these types of things. So this is a project we did with the, uh, these are theoretical numbers, um, but using our current um, tax base, right now we're paying a total of roughly $24,000 a year in tax. Um, after the first building is built with a value of roughly $20 million, um, that tax will jump to roughly $380,000. So the local school, county, and local taxes will increase by about $350,000 annually. At full build out, assuming this, these numbers uh, build out to the rest of the development, it'll be about $1.3 million of increased tax revenue annually. Okay. Here's just some drawings. These are what the buildings uh, will look like. It's Ridge Road to the bottom left. Those are the first two proposed buildings. They may be slightly different than that. Here's one that uh, starts at 100,000 square feet, extends out to I think uh, 200 or 150,000 there. Again, it depends to some extent on the customers. These are the proposed uh, hangers. The three hangers, the, the, the sort of brown one in the middle, the one to its right, and the one lower left already exist. We're proposing to build two more. That's just a cool artist drawing. And that's it, that's the end of my presentation. Are there questions? Um, first, have you already been to the townships and did you already get this kind of tax break with them? No. This so is the first place. Coming this, us first? Yes, okay. this is the first place we're coming, yes. Okay, and then these are projects are already pretty well underway, right? You're already. Yes. The, the advantage that the LERDA will give us is the ability to draw, uh, it gives us an advantage in drawing tenants. These are competitions. So whoever I can draw into these buildings, they're being competed for by all the surrounding municipalities as well. They've already identified this area as a place they want to be. They've already identified the type of development they want to be in. But another municipality has a similar thing. So the idea here is to decrease their cost to get them to come here. I'll tell you what, I'll give you a challenge. If you can go door to door in the community and convince the community to sign a petition that we should lower your taxes while we're not lowering their taxes to do this, and you can bring that petition back to me, then I'll entertain voting for uh, for reducing the taxes over this time period. So, so we're not reducing our taxes; we're increasing them dramatically. Well, but you're you're decreasing them for the first. Like you're asking us basically to give you a tax break over right. so many years. Right. Right. So today, you, today we pay twenty four thousand dollars in tax annually, and we've been paying sort of that amount since nineteen eighty. So the, the school district has been getting not very much money from the property that we own since 1980. What we're trying to do is a development here that will dramatically increase the tax base for this area, okay? And what's in it for the school district and the municipalities is a significantly higher tax base. And a lot of traffic. Well, there have been studies on that. That would, that would be for the townships to address. That's not our job to address the traffic. <coughs> Mr. Byrne, hi, over here. Yeah, I do have a question. Um, so, for for your phase one, your first building that you're talking about here, what time frame are you looking at? This year, it'll be completed in 2018. Should be, yeah. Uh, obviously, construction schedules. Do you have tenants lined up? I have some pros prospects. Nobody's lined up. Nobody signed yet. Nope. Okay. That's what this is about. This is about yeah. giving yeah. them incentive. Understand. <clears throat> Second question. Um, I am concerned about traffic because our school buses use Ridge Road heavily. 
um, I'm concerned of the impact that that will have on our busing and the safety of our students. Because we're all going to be out there at about the same time, busing students and people are going to be coming to work, tractor trailers are going to be coming to make deliveries. Um, Ridge Road is congested as it is. So I am very concerned about the safety of our students. So let me address that. <clears throat> we all know that the intersection of Tunnel and Ridge Road was designed for horses and buggies. Okay? And they probably ran into each other at that intersection. It's really, really bad. Okay? So obviously, uh, Ridge Road is a PennDOT road. So PennDOT has weighed in on this heavily. Okay? And what's going to happen when we do this development, <clears throat> we're widening Ridge Road and putting in a turn lane in front of, in front of the entrance to this development. And we're also taking down two houses <coughs> in the line of sight. <coughs> so when you come out of Tunnel Road, you're going to be able to see hundreds of feet to the left, where right now you can see maybe 30 or 40 feet. You can't see very far at all. You're going to be able to see a lot farther to the left as you're coming out of Tunnel Road. This intersection will be dramatically safer when we're done than it is today. Has there been any discussion of a traffic light there or at the entrance to the um uh, to, to the airport? There has, there has not. That, that's a, PennDOT makes those rules. Okay, thank you. I just, I'm sorry, you um, Although you haven't asked the township for the tax abatement, um, when I was on the, or the school board representative for the Penridge Area Coordinating Committee, I remember Dave Nyman had presented to us at one of our last meetings some of the road improvements that you had talked about. So at least in that aspect, you've been in communications, communications with the township or uh, what have you, right? Because I remember hearing what you just described, that they're going to be widening the road and um, making those roads. Really yeah, the, the, uh, the borough of Hercesy and Can you the turn your microphone on, please? There we go. Sorry. Thank you. The borough of Hercesy and the township have both given approval for this development. So they're well aware of it. It's, it's been going on for close to two years. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's uh, the planning for this takes a long time. I have a question over here. Uh, speaking of the U.S. Gage property, I was on the board when, they, when uh, Mr. Lockham came to present about whatever for that. Now, every time I drive by that, it seems like there's really no action on that property. So what happens now if there's no action of what happens to the taxes? I mean, just, do the taxes stay, do they continue to rise with, or because of the LERDA on that property, which would also be, you know, we could you know, extend that to you, do we lose those increases then because we granted a LERDA and nothing ever happened with the property? Just, okay. Um, well, so the, the, the plan here is to build the first building on spec. Okay, so once the building's there, the taxes go up. Okay, now they won't go up as much until the building is fitted out for a tenant. But the market now is very good, and I think there's reason to believe we can find a high quality tenant soon. Okay, um, so yeah, that build, the first building will go up, and the taxes will go up proportionally with it. Now, whether we build the second one, third one, fourth one, depends on the economy, depends on lots of things. Um, but I think. To some extent, we're in this together. If, if this is successful, the tax base goes up significantly. If it's not successful, we keep paying the same tax we were paying before, since 1980. That, that's what I'm saying. That, that stays then. The taxes will adjust accordingly as we, as we adjust them if you don't build. That's right. It'll, that's right. It'll be the same. It'll be the same as it has been historically. Okay. So do you think this, that's what's happening with the U.S. Gage property? I have no idea what's going on there. Steve could probably comment better than I could. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not associated with that. It, the reason I'm associated with this property is because it's been in my wife's family since 1980. Okay. Ms. Miller, the, the the statute provides that um, the statute authorizes local taxing authorities to exempt new construction in deteriorated areas or economically depressed communities and improvements to certain deteriorated industrial, commercial, and other business properties. So the, the tax break, if the board and the other taxing authorities see fit to, um, to provide for it, applies just to the improvements, um, not to the existing. Not to the existing. Not to the existing oh. um, structure, uh, not to the existing assessment on the property. Thank to you. The, just that. to the improvements. Thank you. 
I have one question. Um, how does this property at the airport fall into the deteriorated class, like our solicitor just said? I think it falls into the underutilized class. Since it's not developed? Yeah, it's it's industrial property that's been idle okay. so for that, 40 years. Okay. Uh, I have a question about, so what, what exactly, if, if we agree to it, what exactly does it mean? Like, what would the tax break be and what would how would it be phased in and does it end you know ten years after we approve it exactly whether anything has happened or not and whether like it, if so you build one building this year and you build another one five years later they only have five years left of the tax breaks um, I think we I think mm -hmm. I think we probably would do them on an individual <laughs> basis so the board would have the ability to say no on the next one even if you approve the first one, I think you would have the ability to say you didn't like how that went. Yes, I heard someone say, would we? Um, so, first of all, I would think that, that, that whatever, uh, if the board sees fit to, uh, to grant or the status to, to all or some portions of these properties, it sounds like it will occur in conjunction with the other taxing authorities, um, if at all. So, uh, so the taxing authorities would have to define the boundaries of the of the Lerta uh, area. Um, they could try to reach an agreement as to what uh, would be covered, but the school district, as a separate taxing authority, would have the ability to define the boundaries of its own Lerta. Um, area by way of the resolution that it passes, uh, the resolution itself would contain the boundaries and a description of the properties that were granted Lerta status. And then there might even be an agreement with the property owner um, that, that references that, that resolution. But at the very least, the board um, would, would pass, if it wanted to grant Lerta status to this project or to some portions of it, it would, it would uh, pass a resolution which would define the boundaries and, and describe the property that was granted the favorable assessment treatment. And does the school district decide on what the tax break is, or is there a certain formula that needs to be followed? The school district has discretion. Um, there is a, there's a firm 10-year limit. I, I've uh, re reviewed the statute about five minutes before this meeting when Mr. Dahlberg asked me if I would stick around and, and, and listen in. Um, the statute uh, provides for a 10-year uh, window, um, so, so the statute is clear about a 10-year window. I, I believe the taxing authority has discretion with respect to um, the amount of tax advantage that, uh, that its larger resolution contemplates. If these gentlemen have another opinion, they can, they can inform us of that. I, that's my understanding. I, typically, the way I've heard it, it's, it's, uh, it's typically 10 years where the first year you pay 10%, second year 20, 30, 40, until the end of the 10th year, you're paying 100% of the assessment. Right, so if you have, the, the LERTA resolution, now I don't know if the statute requires the resolution to be like this, but the LERTA resolutions I've seen in the past, um, in particular in Newtown Township, um, in the mm -hmm. lower end of the county, provided for, uh, say, say the, uh, the cost of the improvement was a million dollars. <coughs> in 2018, the Lerta resolution would provide that 100% of that $1 million cost was exempt. In 2019, 90%. Uh, in 2020, 80%, and so on and so forth. So that after the 10 year, uh, so that the, the, the assessment on the property, in, in effect, slowly increases over that 10 year period of time. And at the end of that 10 year, period of time, the, the tax revenue is based on a, a full assessment of the property. Right, so in this case, the tax to the municipalities and the school district would be greater by the second year already. So you'd already be making significantly more tax revenue in the second year, and then it would ramp up to the 10th year where it's the maximum. And that's because the existing improvement is remains taxed, remains assessed and taxed at its current rate. Whatever. Exactly. So the, the, the idea is to incentivize high quality tenants. <coughs> so the, the, the risk here is that 
we may lose a high quality tenant to another municipality who's willing to do this kind of thing. We may not. We may, you know, we may, you know, some, some tenant may believe this is the most attractive thing ever and they, and they may want it anyway. But um, the financial incentive to the, to the tenant is valuable and it helps us to get a higher quality tenant, which I think is good for the area. So you're trying to get the, the school district, the township, and the county to grant the alert of status? In this case, it's the borough of Perkesy. The borough, okay. Yeah. So just Perkesy Borough, because the other buildings are in? They would be in East Rockville Township, separate, right. separate space. But then is it also the county as well? Yes. And then can, if one or two of those organizations or governing bodies agrees, can it just be a partial alert? Can you have it, or do you need all three to make it work? Or can it just be an agreement with each one of them and say one says no and the other two says yes? Does that, does that work? You know, I, that I, I defer to the solicitor. <laughs> Is there a question, Ms. Yardley, whether one taxing authority can grant alert to status without another? Yes. Can you turn your microphone on, please? The answer to that question is yes, I believe so. So the school district could grant alert to status without uh, Perkesy Borough and vice versa. Okay. Right, the, the, the school district obviously is the highest assessed rate and um, you know, the most valuable in this, in this process. Now, one thing that I hope is attractive to the school district is that this development, with the exception of traffic, doesn't put a load on the, on the school district. There's, there are not children associated with this. You know, we're not sending, we're not sending kids to Penrith schools. We're paying tax. Okay, so I, I hope that's valuable to the, to the school district versus, you know, a large development that brings in lots of kids who cost more than the taxes that are being paid for them. Mr. Berman, um, how did you arrive at the uh, theoretical market value? Just market numbers. Um, I have a, I have a consultant working on the, the, the actual numbers. I, I have some numbers from the, the developer, which is Quandle Enterprises in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, and um, they come, it, it's roughly those numbers. You're, you're close. Okay. Just, because it, because there, these numbers work, these theoretical tax numbers work over the 10 years based on the theoretical market value. If that market value comes in at something less, then these numbers all change. That's true. We're in it together. So, so, and, so. and the second part of that is, um, what's to stop you in a year, two years, three years from um, coming back and wanting to reassess the property at something lower than the two point two million you've estimated? I think the assessment happens by the county, right? Sure. Well, you can appeal the assessment. In, which, in, in theory, I could. I think doing that in the short term probably wouldn't work very well. I don't think there's anything to stop me from doing that, but I don't no, really think no. I see the point. But but you're coming to us with a 10-year plain yeah. payment, and nothing's stopping you in three years from getting um, going to the county um, asking for a reassessment of the property. That's correct. Yeah, that's a possibility. I, I don't see where you would do that, but in theory you could. Okay. It, you. But the percentages stay the same. I mean, right now the taxes paid are $24,000 a year. Those numbers are going to raise dramatically to, in this example, for the first building, $350,000 a year more. Okay, so let's say the assessment is half of what I said there. It's $150,000 versus $24,000. I still like that math. I think that's good for the school district. It's it's a lot better than the $24,000 you're getting today and have been getting for the last several decades. I had a question. Um, what was the projected increase in traffic for the road? I know that this isn't, we're not here to talk about the road, but because of the buses coming in, kids coming to school, if you have, you know, depending on what type of investor you have up there, they could impact, you know, coming and going to school. So there's a 960-ish page traffic report that was done for this. It's been submitted to PennDOT. PennDOT has studied it and has approved of it. So. Um, like I can't answer, I can't say it's under the 100 cars a day. It depends on a lot of, a lot of factors, but what they do is they pick the peak morning and, and evening time. They basically pick the school bus times, okay? And that's when PennDOT wants to see, okay, what's gonna happen to these roads when the school buses are on the road? Um, 
I, I don't know specific, I'd be happy to share the report with you, it's huge. <laughs> um, but uh, it's all been studied by PennDOT and the improvements that we're making to Ridge Road are what PennDOT deems is required, okay? And I'll tell you this, PennDOT's not easy. Um. So I get what you're saying that it's gonna, but it's you're all, you're gonna do this whether we approve this or not. So the difference is we get the hundred percent the first year, or we get the hundred percent by year ten. So when you say, oh well, it would stay at the twenty five, it wouldn't stay at the twenty five because you're still going to do this project. So um, you know, if if someone buys a property and they leave that property sit. Um, obviously that property is not going to be assessed at as high of a value as after they build their home, but they don't get to come in and say, you know, well, I want 10 years until you make me pay the full amount for that house that I just built. So that's kind of how I'm looking at this. And I just, you know, we have, um, we have a lot of people in our community that are struggling with their taxes. And so I guess I'm just, I'm just hesitant to, um, to, to give that break in this situation because other people come in here and they have very um, emotional situations that they're in and, and some, to, you know, and we, we can't do that for them. And so I just, in good conscience, I can't do that for you from my perspective. So your logic is correct, um, but this, this development can have a dramatically larger impact than any individual can, okay? These are much bigger numbers. You know, an individual property owner brings a tiny bit to the school district. This project can bring a lot of money to the school district with very little impact to the school district. Okay? I get what you're saying. What, probably what will happen is it'll make it more difficult for me to get high quality tenants and it'll make me less likely to build the next building. Okay? I'm going to build the first building. Okay? We'll see how it goes. And if it's more difficult to make the economics work on the second building, maybe the second building doesn't happen. Okay. So the idea is to build this thing out so that we all get the maximum benefit from it. Jobs, taxes, everything that comes along with it. I think it's good for the community. Okay. If it's not economically feasible, you don't, you don't build it out. Well, and that can happen anyway. I mean, there's a lot of factors that come into play. So yeah. there could be other factors that would end up making you not build the second building until later. So, I mean, there's, there's a lot of different variables that can impact that. That's true, but what this committee controls is the one factor. Okay, and, and it's an important factor. This is, this, is, this is dramatic, the difference that you can make in this project, and frankly, in the effect that it can have on, the, you know, back around to the school district. You said that you have, you think that you're between, or these people are between two municipalities. I mean, if you could give me kind of a probability that you would get these clients that you're thinking that you would get to come in here. I really can't give you that no. right now. It's so, I'm just like, how far in the process? It's pretty early. We're, we're in the letter of intent phase with one potential, uh, one potential tenant. Um, we have others that are interested, but that no, no farther than that. I mean, I do see the value in having smart development that will bring money to the school district without impacting it as far as the students go, like you were just saying. That does make sense to me. Um, I agree with that. So uh, the other thing, it's just kind of a curiosity. How did you come to uh, decide that one of the choices might be a hotel? Do you have a lot of people that use your airport that you think would need to... There, there are a few reasons for that, and, and to be honest with everybody, that's still hypothetical. Uh, it's on a drawing. And, um, the idea is that you know if we have hundreds of jobs in these in these buildings, and that's you know it would easily add up to that. Um, probably you'll have maybe, maybe we have a biotech that has business in California. Okay, they have people that come in, they have vendors that come in, they have people that need to stay somewhere. Not a whole lot of hotels in Perkinson. Okay, so. Um, what I'm, when I'm talking about a hotel, I'm talking about a really small hotel. I'm not talking about a 300 room Radisson. I'm talking about something small. It's because really, frankly, I think that's all that this area can, can handle. Um, but I think it would be very useful to the development. I think it would be useful to all of you when your in-laws are in town. <laughs> There's lots of reasons to have a small hotel. And that's, that's kind of what my thinking was. 
No, I agree. I think that that would add, it would be attractive to people if you have somewhere that people could stay, just like in the example that you said, okay. that they have business in other places. That's, that's the theory. Now, <laughs> the theory. I'm being, being honest with you, I'm not 100% sure that's what's going to happen, but that's the theory. I just want to make a comment that I understand your concern about school buses and traffic, um, but I also have to agree with Joan about, um, and your comment about PennDOT being really strict on reviewing um, that really like, thousand page booklet. Um, Can you speak up, please? Think, I think it's a <coughs> Sorry, I'm short. Um, I think it's a great idea, uh, even though I know I hear what you're saying about with parents and families, but at the same time, long term goals, and I think. The revenue that would bring to just not the school district but to the community I think is very impactful especially with the airport um, and just opening that business opening that gateway and allowing you know allowing ourselves to make our school shine as well so. thank you that's the theory I mean I, I think I agree I think it's going to be helpful but it's going to be helpful when we get the hundred percent the first year or we get the or I mean the difference is you're getting the tax break and you're going to build it anyway so regardless of what we decide here, um, these plans are well underway. And so all we're doing then is giving a tax break, and I don't think that the community would be very appreciative of us for doing that. I think that they will be appreciative of the extra tax revenue. So <clears throat> I actually don't get the tax break. The tenant does. These are what's called triple net leases. So the tenant will come in, and um, basically I lease them the building at some price per square foot and they pay all of the everything, including the taxes. Okay, so what it's doing is it's giving the tenant an incentive to be in this building. Okay, that benefits their employees who happen to live in and around this area. Right, and then and then other, you know, it, but that tax break isn't going to the other people in the community, they live in their houses, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, it gives them a tax incentive. But, but it can come to them later as the taxes go up and we don't have to well, increase, go up our, anyway. excuse me, our revenue's gonna increase through these businesses without taxing the community individually. And they'll get the benefit from possibly having job employment in there. I think the point is, yes, we would not, or whoever would not be getting 100% of those taxes the first year. But if you want to make things attractive to business to come and develop in your area, that's this is the, the little thing that you need to do to get them to come here instead of going to another township. And that's part of our problem in, in our school district. We don't have the tax base that other school districts have. You know, we rely a lot on, on homeowners. And as he was saying, you know, that that's a, a pot that is not that easy to go to for, for taxes, but businesses that don't put children in the school can bring you a lot of money without adding a lot to your burden as far as the school district um, school district needs are. So I, that's I think the point that you're making. Yeah, you? and, and I think it's it's important to realize too that this whole thing doesn't end in 10 years. I mean, once these buildings are built, they should be there a very long time. The school district, I don't know how old Penridge School District is, but it's pretty old. And uh, this development... Um, yeah, your wife graduated. Right? My wife graduated from here. So yeah, you know, it's, it's, said it. it's been a while. A <laughs> I'll, I'll tell her, Mrs. Miller. No, no, you said it. <laughs> uh, the idea is, this is 10 years, um, and, and larger amounts every year so you know really the the major break happens in the first couple of years after that it's the, the taxes are accumulating dramatically and after the 10th year there's no there's no break and that, and that goes on basically perpetually as long as the development lasts so you know here you have a if you look at the long term which is a school district is very long term this development probably won't be as long term as the school district but it's going to be very long term this this revenue increase goes on for a very long time so this is a relatively short-term incentive to get this thing going for a long-term benefit to the school district let you know that the school district is younger than i am so i appreciate that comment uh, it was formed in 1952 and actually opened for business in 1954. Um, so when do you need a decision on this? Is this something that you need in the next few weeks? Is it something that we have more time than that? I would think in the next couple of months would be fine. I'm in the early stages of negotiations with some potential tenants. 
Um, and at this point, I can tell them that the concept of alert of tax discount is on the table. I don't have to tell them that it exists because obviously it doesn't. Um, but I can tell them that we're talk, we're having the discussion. Um, maybe depending on how the conversation finishes tonight, I can say that I'm hopeful. Um, but you know, I think if we had something in the next couple of months, that would be good timing for me. Um, if it drags on a lot longer than that, I'm pretty much not going to be able to offer it to them in a time frame that's going to make a difference. So, roughly. So there's been a lot of discussion tonight. Um, what else do board members need to know in order to decide yay or nay on this issue? I, had, I just had another question about the roads. You mentioned Tunnel Road, which I looked up on the, on the map, but are there improvements or widening or anything around Blooming Glen Road, which is really close to the entrance, or even down um, Bridge Road, like by where it intersects with 313, because that light, I think when you're coming, it's really uh, hard to get off Bridge Road. Yeah, the, like I said in the presentation, it's a three-phase uh, rollout is what I'm expecting to happen. Phase one is really just improvements in front of the site. There'll be a widening and a turn lane, the improvement to the Tunnel Road, Ridge Road intersection. And we're also, believe it or not, going to do some improvements out at uh, Ridge and Lawn, where Lawn Avenue goes on through 309. Okay, there'll be minor improvements, but PennDOT has a big scope. They look far and wide. Phase two will probably, um, it hasn't been nailed down yet, but there probably will be improvements at uh, at um, 313 and, and Ridge Road. Uh, there could very well be improvements at um, uh, Old Bethlehem Pike and Ridge Road. Um, and I definitely wants to do something with that intersection because even today on Ridge Road, there's quite a bit of truck traffic, a surprising amount of truck traffic on Ridge Road today. And when they try to make a turn onto Old Bethlehem Pike, that's a tight corner. Yeah. Okay, so PennDOT's definitely got their eye on that one. So I would imagine there'll be some improvement there. Um, Really, it comes down to what PennDOT sees, what they, what they want to see happen. But they're already telling us, OK, as this thing grows up, here's what you're going to need to do. Thank you. Yeah. Our experience with PennDOT has not been particularly positive, as you might guess. <laughs> Me either. Um, I think that's probably, many people have that situation. Would we uh, revamp the high school campus, including the, the high school rebuild and addition, plus the North Middle School? Of course, uh, they dictated largely the traffic flow off of this campus, particularly onto Fifth Street. That's where the light came from, and the light was something that took them months and months and months to decide that they were going to require us yeah. to do. So, you know, who knows what will happen with PennDOT because, um, as I say, our experience has been difficult. It's it's just not an easy organization. In fact, uh, I believe that. We finally enlisted the aid of Representative Clemmer when he was in the seat in Harrisburg, and he helped with that because he obviously had yeah. better connections than we did for, for obvious reasons. So, um, so I'll ask this question again. We need to make a decision and move on to, with tonight's agenda. Do we need any more information either from the folks who are presenting this LERDA proposal or from Mr. Dalbert? Or shall we advance this to the level of a decision on the February 26th board meeting? Do not rush it. Peter, I'd like to see or hear some more information from PennDOT. Okay. Um, we have a lot of student drivers that use Ridge Road. We have a lot of buses that use Ridge Road. Ridge Road today is a parking lot sometimes as our um, young men and women try to turn onto Blooming Glen Road. It becomes quite hazardous at times. So I'd like to see what PennDOT has to say. Um, so, I, I guess I would also, I would just like to see if there's support to move it forward. Well, that was really my question. Right. <laughs> so Mr. Mr. Krause has said he'd like to at least wait. I, I need to move I, and assuming Mrs. Banus Clemens, that you're not in support of moving okay. it forward. I think you've made that very clear. Mrs. Dolan? You've got months. Uh, I would like I would like to see a head notch traffic study, at least a maybe a debriefed version of it. Or a summary of it. Because that is a concern how much more traffic there gets on the school. Mrs. 
Mr. Jordan? I, I'm in favor of moving it forward. This is Kilmer. Moving it forward. Moving it forward. I would be in favor of moving it forward, but I, I mean, between February or March, would that yeah, that's bother cool. you that much? Um, so if the traffic information can't be satisfied before the February meeting, then I wouldn't mind having it in March. Okay. I'm in favor of moving it forward as well, but let's let's compromise and move it onto the March agenda, Mr. Dauber so that uh, we can make a decision and give this gentleman and the Percocet folks uh, a heads up one way or the other. I don't see the point in dragging it out for sure. You did say we already had the study, the PennDOT study, didn't you? Yeah, so, so let me just, let me just clarify. Break it down I, have, I, I have some, I have a, a question and a, and a comment about where the, and I don't want to cut anyone off, uh, but just let's not abandon this conversation before I get my question answered. So go ahead, sir. Uh, so, so in order for this to happen, it has to go through land development. I don't know how many of you have done land development, but it's a process. <laughs> you know it's a process. And in that process, uh, since the Ridge Road is a PennDOT road, PennDOT weighs into the process. And um, this has been agonized over for almost two years, okay? Uh, all of the information is out there, and it's all been approved by Percocet Borough, and it's also been approved for their part by East Rockville Township. Um, the traffic information can be, uh, it's public information and you can get it from the Percocet Borough Engineer, Doug Racino, has all of this information and I, I'd recommend anybody that wants to talk about it should talk directly to Doug because he's the guy who knows everything from the Percocet Borough perspective. He'll give you an unvarnished Percocet Borough point of view that has technical background to it. He's an engineer. So, you know, if you want to learn about traffic from a an unbiased source, I'd go talk to Doug, and um, he knows everything about this project. Okay? I, where is the borough with, with its um, ordinance, if any, uh, at this point? That, that, I, I don't have any horse in the race as to whether the board approves this, uh, this status for the property, but um, I do have an interest in making sure it's done right if, if it's done so. What, where is the borough with its process? Has it had a public hearing? Has it uh, described the property in question? Uh, has it passed an ordinance? Uh, we were at the same position that you are. So we wanted to come to meet with you this evening to find out what your thoughts were on this. Uh, the Percocy Borough Council, uh, uh, Jim Purcell is in the audience here um, to show support from the borough government itself. Um, and the Percocet Borough Council, I mean, they're very proactive, very progressive, so we've created a lot of in ec economic initiatives to support all of us in the community. Um, so the, the next step, and we could have our solicitors speak with you, that would probably be, you know, so everybody's on the same page together. Ideally, you want all three entities to be un you know, unified in this process. Um, and essentially what it does, it's sort of, you know, if the districts look, how do you invest your money? Like, you're, you're locked into certain vehicles, um, like uh, government-funded treasury bonds that are very low interest. Here you're guaranteeing yourself a 10% return with no risk whatsoever. <coughs> and I think in particular with Mr. Brink's project, I mean, there is no burden on the school district in any way. Uh, the land development questions you have about roads and things, this project will actually improve the entire Ridge Road area for you with no expense to you. Um, and then also I just want to say we have one other applicant, uh, uh, which is the Del Bar property, which has been vacant for the last 10 years, and they are asking for the same uh, LERDA tax uh, incentive as well. So I hope we have time for them to speak just briefly to you. Yes, let's hear what, as long as you're here, let's hear that good, good quickly. Let, let, me, let me just say one last thing. The question directly from Mrs. Yardley was related to Blooming Glen Road, and I realize I never answered the question. Phase two, uh, you'll see the driveway coming from our airport um, straight up. It, it, it comes directly into Blooming Glen Road. Um, PennDOT hasn't designed the intersection yet, but I, I can't imagine there wouldn't be a light there. Okay. 
I don't know what's going to finally happen there, but the, the second phase is to build. We use the driveway between us and Hart Mechanical right now. We would move that driveway over to line it up with uh, Logan Glen Road, and I believe we would make a dramatic safety improvement to that road as well. I'm sorry I didn't answer your question the first time. I, I wasn't trying to be, uh, well, I'm not a lawyer or a politician. So. <laughs> if, if there's no more questions for me, I'll go. Thank you. Um, I'd like to introduce Michael Kraft, uh, who's an attorney um, uh, for Steve Cassidy on his project. Um, I've worked with Mr. Cassidy over the last eight years in Hepro, which is one of my other municipal clients, on two large-scale projects, uh, one, both of them old factory buildings, exactly like the Stelbar property. And, um, you know, I think what he's doing, like this project could not happen um, without it, and that's why this property has been vacant for the last decade. And so there are some environmental issues, and the, the tax incentive allows for, um, you know, the new development to occur. And I, uh, I will allow Michael to speak to this. Uh, and the borough has approved this project. They've gone ahead through our zoning uh, hearing board, uh, and that was just within the last couple of months. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Michael Kraft, I'm an attorney from Percocy. And you were kind enough to educate my three sons. And thank you for that. Uh, as uh, we grew up uh, watching our kids play on the fields, we also watched every one of these first generation manufacturing facilities that populate all of our communities go from barely occupied to vacant to something worse today. Um, my clients, Stephen Peg Cassidy, could you stand up? Stephen Peg, our uh, local folks raised their families here too, not in the Penry School District, but down the pike, uh, have been involved in a number of these adaptive reuse projects where they take a building in dilapidated conditions such as Del Bar um, and apply the love and funds necessary to bring it back to its original architectural splendor. Steve, did we give this? We'll board a, a copy of a couple of the pictures from their lower end project. Do you have that on your laptops? They have physical. Are you seeing on your laptops what I have up on this screen or not? Yeah. Yes. I don't know. What are you seeing? What are we seeing, Mike? Do you have a mirror? Uh, floor plan. Floor plan. All right, I'm going by it. Like Down the pike. Yeah, floor plan. In Hapro. Essentially the same thing. I don't know what screen that is, but it's about 10, 10 screens through. You see uh, uh, what was an old dilapidated uh, manufacturing site that has been uh, brought back to productive adaptive reuse and as has been made by Waypoint, uh, brought a tenfold increase to the tax base, if not more. Uh, what we propose back to the start of the slide presentation is to take the facade of the original Del Bar building back to what it was done, what it was built like originally, so that it has its architectural significance brought back to modern standards and, and is once again a uh, high water mark of what's going on in the community. Uh, we propose 80 uh, residential units from studios to two bedrooms. Uh, we are in the middle, as uh, Mr. Barth said, with working through uh, the continuing environmental concerns uh, with the Department for Environmental Protection, that is not a done deal. We're in the process of developing a plan uh, to follow up on the work that's already been done on the site. Uh, we're thankful that it's public water, will be public sewer, uh, so that has been historically for the upgrading as well as downgrading properties a non-issue. Um, it reminds me of something John Hollenbach said to me when Percy Borough, when I was solicitor, said about doing uh, for savings now in a pen community. These kinds of projects are not for the faint of heart. Because once you crack them open, it's like dancing with a gorilla. You're not done dancing until the gorilla's done dancing. Um, unlike the first presentation, there are a lot of things about this project still up in the air. We're working with historical uh, tax credits with some banks, and so we don't know where that's gonna go. I've already said we're working with the DP. 